Hey guys, thanks again for uh, tuning in. I got another question from a friend and I'm going to try to make it um, as simple as possible because this is something that, um, I mean, I could go into it with lots of scripture, um, but I'm just going to um, use a couple of passages to um, try to explain this the best I, that I can. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for a couple of days. Um, you know, it was asked earlier, I don't know, last, last week or something like that. But, um, but yeah, so here's the synopsis. Here's the breakdown, um, of what was asked is there are many people in the world who are offended by God. That is true. You just mention the name I'm, or, or even the word God or Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit and people, you know, start going crazy. And um, that's the unfortunate state of things in the world today. However, the Bible does tell us those things will happen. Um, and then... Um, the second part of this is, are they actually in fear of the unknown or are they in fear of a misunderstanding of God and perhaps who God is? Um, and I think that's very possible because a lot of the secular world only hears or only takes in, only hears, you know, like words like abomination and you know, um, things like that. They only hear the negative things of what God does. And I'm not saying that God does anything negative. Um, they're just seeing negative things out of what he does. Um, you know, like the flood, the flood is a big one that comes up. If, if God is a loving God, then why would he destroy the earth? Um, Questions like that come up a lot. Um, but if you look at the big picture, you know, God is sovereign and um, God does everything for good, for his glory. Um, and at the same time, there's a lot of things about God that we will never know this side of heaven, possibly ever, because God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. Um, and, you know, there are many mysteries of God. Luther, come here. Come here. Here. Come on. It's okay. Come on. This was also a request. Come on. We want to see Luther. Huh? Come here, Lou. All right. Oh, he's getting big. So, here's Luther. Oh. <laughs> He's a big puppy. He is uh, going to be 11 weeks tomorrow. 11 weeks tomorrow. He's a handful, but I love him. I'm trying to get him over this whole biting thing. Nope. We're teaching him sit, lay, stay here. Stay and here are two different commands. Stay and here. But anyway, we're, we're teaching him those things. And He's grasping them. He does not like to lay, but, um, and our command for lay is down. And we have a command for getting off of things, which is off. So down and off are two different things. Um, we haven't gotten to the off thing yet because he hasn't been able to get up onto things until about last night. But yeah, so here's Luther. Named after Martin Luther. And, yeah. So, anyway, back to it. You can go play. Go play. And he doesn't want to go play. But, anyway. So, yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, we will never understand about God and who God is. But we do know from Scripture that everything that... Go. Hey. Go. Wait. Go on. Go play. Go play. Go play. Not with 
the dog that doesn't like you. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, everything that God does is in love and for his glory. Just a second. You have three toys, three toys sitting in the middle of the room. Here's one. Okay. Play with those, please. <sighs> Sorry, guys. But, and then the third part of this question is, is what I want to get to. Um, and that is, can this be simplified and the truth be communicated by simple scripture? And to that, I'm going to say yes and no. Um, it can be explained to believers by simple scripture. Um, as for non-believers, you can quote scripture to them all day long, and they're going to argue with you. Um, and that's just the way it is. However, um, this is something that I had to learn from personal experience. Um and I'm going to go to scripture here. Um, let's take that out. Um, so first thing I'm going to go to is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And um, I'm going to start in verse 13. It says, We also speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit explaining spiritual things to the spiritual people. Um, but the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit, because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. All right. So, right there, it basically says, if... Um, if God's spirit is not with you, then you're not going to understand spiritual things. Um, and that doesn't make sense to people who don't have the spirit with them. Um, and going along with that, first uh, John chapter four, verses four through six, um, and it says, you are from God, little children, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, what they say is from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Anyone who knows God listens to us. Anyone who is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deception. So, again, there's, there's just, there's only two, well, there's not only, but there's just two places from the Bible where it says that an unbeliever, they literally cannot comprehend what Scripture says. Um, they can analyze it, they can go through it, they can kind of, sort of, grasp um, what it's saying, but they cannot understand, they can't fully comprehend what Scripture says. Um, and this is something that I struggled with for many years. Um, and I was talking to this friend just the other day, and I was saying, you know, when, when I was in um, my stage of backsliding, um, I would still read the Old Testament. Um because I believe that to be um, historical, archaeologically sound, you know, things like that. And as a Satanist, I would still read the Old Testament. Um, however, I was a Christian. I was walking with God before that time. So whether I knew it or not, I still had the spirit in me. And that's kind of a whole other thing. However, I, I was tossing and turning one night and I opened up the Bible. In fact, I'm going to, th this is, 
Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to turn, I believe it's 1 John 5, 58, or is it? No, cannot be. So John 8, 58. So in the Gospels, John 8, 58. Yes, there it is. Okay, so this verse, like, dramatically changed the way I thought about Christianity and the Bible and the Word of God and Jesus Christ. So, if you go back to 857, it says, The Jews replied, You aren't 50 years old yet, and you've seen Abraham? So they're questioning him, and he he said, uh, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So in verse 57, they, the Jews replied, Aren't you 50? You aren't even 50 years old yet. And you've seen Abraham. Verse 58. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus was hidden and went out from the temple. So that verse, that night, um, things changed for me. And because reading the Old Testament, God says, I am. When God is telling Moses to go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go, Moses tries to find every, uh, every excuse that he can to get out of this. And when he finally, he was like, well, who do I tell him that is speaking? Who do I tell him that I'm from? And God's reply to him, I am that I am. So you tell him that I am is telling him this. I am is God. And Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. So as a Satanist, I knew what that meant. And I'm sure Pharaoh at that time knew what that meant. Um, so... You know, but many people will just skip over that and don't truly realize what that means. And at that moment, that night, I realized what that meant because I had this, um, I had forgotten and, and the devil is deceptive. He will um, cause you to forget things, but the spirit brings to remembrance the things that you know. Um, but you know, at that time I thought Jesus was just, you know, a, a good teacher, uh, you know, teaching a, a good way of life and love and all that stuff. But I never at that time, never thought that Jesus ever claimed to be God. And right there in scripture, he's making himself equal with God. Um, so, and that's why. The, the Pharisees wanted to stone him because that's blasphemy unless you're God. So anyway, uh, can this be simplified and the truth be communicated by simple scripture? Um, yes, it can be. It can be. And, and there are people who watch these videos, friends of mine, actually, that I grew up with somewhat. I've known them for decades. But anyway, who are not believers have watched these videos that you're watching right now and have come to me with other questions and even started reading the Bible because of these videos and is coming to me with questions and their take, their thought on certain books, chapters, passages. And I mean, that for me is kind of a big deal. Um, and, um, and that's none of my work. That's not my work. That's God alone. Um, and I've got this friend here who is asking me these questions and, you know, those things just kind of push me to keep doing this because, you know, like I've said, I don't know everything, but these questions kind of, um, make me want to dig into these questions and 
I've got, I mean, this camera is sitting on two different study Bibles. I've got, you know, I'm so I've got resources here. I've got resources on the internet. I've got, you know, U version Bible app. If you don't have that, go get it. Um, and I mean, I've got that. I've got all these things that are at my fingertips. And these questions cause me to want to dig into those things because without them, you know, I'll read my Bible right now. I'm reading through revelation. Um, if, these times right now, you might want to be reading the book of Revelation. Um, you know, you, you see these bookmarks here. I've got every single one of them has a purpose. This one here is in Ezekiel. Um, and this one here is in Proverbs. And so I do these things, but I don't always necessarily study um, like I used to. So these questions give me a reason to do that um, because I'm not always self-motivated to do those things. So thank you. And as always, if I am off base um, with this context and these scriptures and these questions, let me know. We can talk about it because like I said, I don't know everything. But and I like to be corrected if I'm wrong. Now, don't be condescending. That's not like a invite to bash me or anything. <laughs> and I don't suggest anybody do that um, ever to anybody. But in fact, I just had a conversation about that today earlier. But anyway, thank you for listening. I hope this answered your question. Um, and again, if any of you have any other questions or comments or anything like that, let me know. And I will do my best to um, clarify it or explain it. And I don't know. If I don't know, then maybe I'll give what I think about it. Um, and yeah, so it's just an ongoing thing. It's a process. It's a learning process. And I do enjoy it. So anyway, thank you. God bless.